Hey everyone, in this video I'll take you through a beginner's guide to FAL.AI or fall.ai. Here we are at fall.ai on the dashboard and this will give you an idea of what to expect while you're here. Your account icon is going to be up here at the top right hand corner and you can also see here how many credits you have left and you can also click the plus sign there to add credits. Let's just go ahead and scroll down here and we will find out that with FAL.AI, I'll just refer to it as that, we have ready to use model APIs, the most popular models implemented and available as API endpoints for you to start crafting your own AI powered app today. This is a great way to start for use cases such as UI focused applications for existing models, prototype of AI powered applications with custom models that are in development, benchmarking and result analysis of different models. Scrolling down just a bit, you can see some of the models that you will have access to in FAL.AI. You've got the Flux Pro, you've got Flux LoRa Fast Training, Flux LoRa Portrait Trainer, we have Recraft, and here Flux Pro V1 Fill, this is image to image, and then we have Aura SR, upscale your images with Aura SR. Going down a bit further, we have some information here related to it being open source. Here you might need custom model implementations. And of course we have some options here in the menu if you need to get in touch with FAL.AI or if you are interested in the Discord channel, GitHub, Twitter, or LinkedIn, all of that information here is found at the bottom. Let's go ahead and head back up to the top. And here you're going to see in the main menu, we have a few options to look at. We've got Explore, My Apps, API Keys, Workflows, Manage, Usage, and Billing. Let's go ahead and select Explore. And here you can see the model gallery where you can find all the available model APIs provided by FAL.AI. So here we have Kling and we have a variety of others, some that we've already looked at. We'll just scroll down here really quick. And here we have all models. You just see a list of everything they have. And it is a quite long list as you can see there. So. If you need to search through this and you want to try to isolate something specific, we do have a filter menu here on the side and you can check the box here to whittle things down to make it easier to find what you're looking for. So let's go ahead and select image to 3D. So you can see there that it's giving us these apps to take a look at. We've got image to image, we've got image to video, large language models, speech to text, text to audio, text to image, text to video, training, video to video, and vision. So that's giving you somewhat of a snapshot there to what you can expect with FAL.AI. I will just go ahead, go now to my apps, and here you can see that I have already used one app, which is Omnigen. And Omnigen is a text to image generator. That's something we could take here, we could take a look at here in a moment. But let's just go ahead and stick with the main menu for now. We'll take a look at API keys, and here you can manage your API keys and their settings. I don't have anything in there yet. We can click here to add a key. We've got workflows and under workflows, we have FAL workflows and we have comfy UI workflows. So that's just to give you an idea of what to expect there. We can select under manage either versal integration or webhooks. We have our usage and we also have our billing. So something to consider with FAL is that it does require credits to use. And you can see here that you have $10, $20, $50 or custom. 
So you will need to pay that amount in order to purchase credits so that you can continue to use FAL. They do offer some credits to play around with and it'll allow you to do a certain amount, but I could tell you that with the 20 cents here that I have left, that is gonna be enough for one image generation using Omnigen. Let's go ahead and go back to my apps and you can see here that we have Omnigen. You're gonna to need to click on the title to open it up. And here we have a look at Omnigen. So you can add images if you want to use them as reference. Here you have the prompt box. And let's go ahead and see this here. Okay, so we have a form. We have these different options here. We won't take too much of a look at that because our focus is primarily here in the prompt box and here we can see that there is a prompt waiting for us so if you want to try out Omnigen then you can use the prompt that's here and essentially neon words Omnigen flashing in the prosperous future city sense of science and technology quality details hyper realistic high definition H 8k photo best quality high quality these are some good prompts to use in general. If you want to just erase the first part here, neon words, omnigen, flashing in the future, science, technology, up until we get to quality details. And if we just put in something, I'm gonna put in a fantasy forest. And we'll just leave the rest there because then it shows, tells the generator what it is that we want to see. So we want to see hyper-realistic, high definition, photo, best quality, high quality. And then if we select run, it's going to begin to generate. Let's go ahead and do so. And this should take a few moments. So I'll just pause and we'll be right back. Okay, and we now have our results. So you can see here that our fantasy forest, quality details, hyper-realistic, high definition, 8K photo, best quality, high quality, and this is the result that we've gotten. I like it. There's definitely some nice stuff that's going on here. I feel like it's not exactly adhering to the prompt in that it doesn't look like a photo and I'm not sure how hyper-realistic this comes across as, but we are getting a lot of really nice detail here. If you look with the grass, there is some really uh, fine detail going on there. Even in the tree itself, the trees it's themselves, you've got some nice leaves going on there, and it really is quite nice. This is a, a, good, uh, pro uh, a good result there. Not exactly what I might have wanted, but then this is kind of where you need to add more details if you want to get certain specific results. So in this case, we just did something kind of straightforward just to kind of give you an idea of how that works. And as I said, generally speaking, these are some prompts that you might want to use with most of the generations that you do. Once you have what you're looking for here, as far as the generation, you have a couple options. You can either share, open, or download. So if we want to download that, we can go ahead and click download, and that will now download to my machine. So at this point, I am out of credits. So if I do want to continue to using FAL, then I will need to do that. One thing I will say about this is I do think that this is something that you might want to consider if you like the idea of having access to multiple apps all in one place. So that's a little bit different from what you might have to deal with otherwise, which is to go to the individual websites and deal with them directly. That's something that you might want to consider because it's possible that you might be missing out on some credits for doing so. But with FAL, you do have a really nice opportunity to have one place where you can access a variety of different apps. So on that basis, I do think that it is something that's worth considering. That's all there is to it. If you found this video helpful, please leave a comment and like and subscribe for more helpful tips.